Good morning you lot and what a wonderful morning it is, it's a lovely Sunday morning. So I've been having a lot more questions and I've also been noticing there's a lot of people getting into the hobby of Nitro RC and either buying second hand cars or new cars that they can't get to start or they can't get to run very well. So let's go through a few things to look for, a few things to look out for, just anything that can help you out and um, hopefully we'll get your car running perfect. All right, let's use this FTX Carnage because it's probably going to be one of the most common cars that one of you is going to buy if you're you know, starting out in it or whatever. Just drop the, drop the here. Yeah, I'll clip now. I'll find it in a minute. Where's that gone? I'll find it in a minute. Anyway, so. Some of you are buying sort of second hand cars that are a bit worn out or whatever. But also some of you like I say are getting new cars and you just need to learn how they work. So all I seem to find myself doing is explaining things, but that's good because, you know, if I can pass on some knowledge to somebody that's all dandy. So I'm gonna go through a mental list of things that I can think of that may inhibit the operation of your engine. The first thing I can think of, and I've never had it actually like fail on me, um, but I've had it before where it's been propped open, and that's this. This is the cap for your fuel tank. Now, the way that the the fuel tank and well, the, the way the fuel tank sort of works together with the engine in order to work is pretty much just like a pump so on an ordinary car you'd have a fuel pump electric pump on on the older cars it was a, would have been a mechanical pump but still would have had a pump and the modern ones is just an electric pump in the tank sometimes yeah mo mo mainly in the tank these days and it pump the fuel to the engine but with these being a basic little engine they don't have any pumps or anything like that I mean lawnmowers and whatever else have a gravity feed you know, the tanks higher up than the engine so it gravity feeds down to the carburetor but because on most nitro cars the tank is lower or the same height as the engine there's no gravity can take place wouldn't be able to put an electric pump in because you'd have to have a separate battery for that and that'd just be a nuisance another another battery to charge up another battery to go flat in the day so they use the exhaust pressure to push the fuel through into the carburetor okay so it's essentially a big pump so you've got you've got your pipe this is your exhaust comes out your engine and then you've got a little pipe it's probably a bad example because you can't bloody see it but there's a little pipe connected to the exhaust in there if you go and look on your car now you'll have that and you'll see it some of them are at the top more easy to see and more to get to some around here but this one's a little bit awkward it's around there just inside so that pipe goes up and it goes into the top of the fuel tank so you've got a pipe going in the top there it's not connected to anything see it just uh, vents around and goes in and then you've got on this one again for some well not for some reason it's just the design of it is a little pipe that goes into the bottom of the tank and it's connected to that top one here on a lot of tanks um the pipe just goes in at the bottom and uh, that's as simple as that but it's the same thing and then you've got it comes out of the tank and goes into the carb okay so what happens is when your engine runs the exhaust comes through the, the exhaust and most of it comes out most of it comes out the uh, little exit there, comes out the exhaust pipe. But some of it builds up inside here, and there might be a little baffle in some exhausts. Some do, some don't, but a little baffle kind of thing, which collects it. And then it shoots it up, the pressure, the fumes, whatever you want to call them, gases, whatever you want to call them, shoot up this pipe and go into the tank. That's why sometimes, when you open up your tank to refuel it, a load of smoke will come out. That's just because that's the fumes that have gone through that pipe, in there and now on the oops if you, if you see that you can see it can't you there's a little red rubber seal sometimes they might be black not always red usually red but i've had i've got black ones anyway 
little seal around there that seals the tank so this is this is one sealed sort of pressurized tank now <clears throat> so that pushes that which then pushes the fuel up and out through that tube into the carb that's how it works so if you've got a leak so for example your little cap there maybe the spring's broken or it's, or it's got some debris or something stuck in it which is keeping it propped open a little bit or maybe the seal's bad it's gone split it's not even there perhaps so all that pressure that's coming through that pipe is then just escaping around the top and, and it's not going to be pumping the fuel through to the carb very well if at all so if you find your engine's not running properly or perhaps it runs for perhaps you prime it and then it runs for a few seconds and then it stops or it might run lean and you can't stop it It had a crack in it, and uh, the fuel used to leak out through it and everything. It was that bad, it actually leaked out the side of the tank. Um, I had to fill it up quite often. But it was no problem, and it kept running, and it ran well. And it for months, I was using it every day for months with that crack in it, until eventually I jumped it, and the crack actually split open, and the tank was split open. I did try to glue it together, um, but it didn't work. Um, so I had to go and buy a new tank. But... Yeah, so it's just something to look out for. Another thing to look out for is um, perhaps less common, but it can still be a problem. Of, you know, we're getting a little bit deeper into it now. But the bolts, hopefully you can see in there. Let me see. I'll go and get a torch or something. All right. So... There we go. So you've got four Allen bolts. One there, one on that corner, on each little corner, yeah? Now, they can come loose. They might not be tight from the factory. I have seen that before, where they've not been that tight from the factory. Especially if you get a cheap Chinese RC car. The real brand ones ain't going to be so bad. There's still going to be mistakes, but the cheaper Chinese ones are going to be uh, worse. So they might not be tight from the factory, or they might have vibrated loose you know if you've got a second hand one and you can lose your compression from around the bottom of your heatsink or your head or whatever you want to call them the heatsink head i tend to go for both phrases for that because i'm a bit weird and it's a head really isn't it but it's also a heatsink i mean what that's what the head is um when it's air cooled anyway so you can lose your compression from there and also a little bit of fuel and that will cause it to run lean and it might even cause it not to run at all so that's something to look for um right let's have a think of something else to look for right so something else to look for um but you probably won't notice this because uh unless you're get, starting to get a little bit experienced now because the effects that basically what it is you could you've got a little bolt what holds your carburetor on oh, wrong side as well typically on this engine it's on this side a uh, little bolt down in there i don't know whether you're going to be able to see it. a little black bolt covered in dirt and dust at the end of my fingertip that basically pinches the end of the carburetor and holds it on holds it in place and seals around it Excuse me. So, what can happen is, if that is loose, it might vibrate loose. I've had it vibrate loose before. I've been running the Savage around, and 
I stopped it to refuel it and I noticed that it was moving. <laughs> the carp was twisting. I'm like, what the fuck? That shouldn't be happening. So I did that up. Anyway, so and it, uh, make sure that's tight. If you've got a lean running engine, it's going to be sucking in air around the bottom of the carb and it's going to cause it to run lean. So make sure that's tight if you've got a lean running engine or just an engine that won't run properly, won't tune. Um, other things to look for, I've had it before, and in fact some of you might even remember. This one doesn't have it, um, but some engines have a, a mid-range needle here. And I had it on the Savage where that came out in the middle of a go. You know, I was going around a field and it started to run lean, I bring it back and the needle was completely gone. It wasn't in there whatsoever. So keep an eye on your needles. I can't see the high speed one coming out or the low speed one, but that mid range one I've I've had them on different different engines, they've started to come loose. I've only ever lost one once. But they've I've had them come loose. So check your needles. Make sure that they're all we can't make them tight obviously, because if they're tight they're gonna be closed off and then they won't work at all. But make sure that they're in place and where they should be and make sure that they're you know, got some resistance there when you turn them. Because if they're really loose you know, they've been turned a lot over their time and they're really loose and then they're just going to vibrate out and wobble around. Um, there should be a little spring behind them which keeps them in place. Um, I've, I've also seen it before where people have always had the needles out and not replaced them properly and they're just flapping around inside there which is no good. Other things to look for. The other basic thing is your glow plug. If your engine is not running right, your glow plug might be on its way out or it might be dirty. So take the glow plug out and give it a clean. Um, make sure it's alright. Have a spare one. Put a spare one in. Does the engine run better? If you put a new one in and it runs better, keep the new one in it. If you put a new one in and it doesn't change how it runs, it still runs the same. Take the new one out, put it in your toolbox and keep it as a spare. Put the old one back in because the old one was fine. Um, there's not really a lot else to it. I can't think of a lot else. Make sure your air filter's clean. Um, so if you're turning your needles to tune your engine and you're finding that the, the turning them is not really doing a lot. It's not doing anything really, you know. You need to check to make sure you've got, like I say before, no leaks in your fuel pumping system, no leaks on your carburetor, no leaks around anywhere because there, there'll be a problem. But other than that, nitro engines are incredibly simple. I can't think of anything else that would make it run lean. Make sure your exhaust is done up properly because these are a two-stroke engine and they do rely on an exhaust. Although they will run without an exhaust, but they just rely on it to run properly. More deeply into the situation, if your engine is running lean and it well, keeps running lean, doesn't matter how much you richen up those needles, it still runs crap. You need to look into the bearings on your flywheel, your big, your your main crank bearings. On your flywheel because the crankcase in a two-stroke engine is a sealed unit it has pressure in there the fuel comes in through the carb into the crank it goes around in there oils up your crank bearings and all that other stuff the main bearings and all that and then it will shoot up the side where it goes into the combustion chamber if there's a leak on the on the crank on the um, on the casing uh, you might have a crack or you might have a leak around the seal where the bearings are or the flywheel attaches or you could have a leak anywhere around there that's going to let air in and a bit of pressure out but it's going to let air in and you're going to have a, a lean condition and it's not going to go away it doesn't matter how much you richen up the needles it's going to be a lean condition no matter what because the air is going to keep going in you can richen it up as much as you want it and might make it a bit better but the air is going to keep being sucked in and it's and uh, you know the it's just not going to run very well at all. But that's more of a critical engine failure getting on for that, really, because the likelihood of that being is not very likely. Um, it's very, very possible, but not very likely. So before you start thinking, oh, no, me crank bearings, me case is cracked, me this is that, whatever, do the other things first. Do the most common things with the leaks around the fuel system, uh, your carburetor being a bit loose, your 
head bolts being a bit loose, losing the compression around there. Maybe you've got some shit in your needles and you're a bit blocked up, whatever, it's not working properly. Think of things like that before you start worrying about more important problems. More important, more um, drastic problems. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty much it. And the point of me making these videos isn't to sort of shame, embarrass, or be... Um, what's the word? Is it pessimistic? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, um, be sarcastic or whatever towards the new people that don't understand these engines. It's just to help you. Um, so, you know, some people do, do worry a lot and they do start to panic a lot. And it's a bit daunting, I suppose, for them. You know, it's this, wow, it's a little engine. I mean, you know, some people have never dealt with an engine before and they don't know what to do. So, this is... Uh, hopefully going to give you some much needed inspiration and, and just you know calmness about the whole thing that'll help you um, get yours running to the best possible i was going to start it up this morning but it's still quite early in the morning so i'm not going to be able to start it up um, and show you anything but i'm going to do a whole video there's several ways of which you can tune your engine I've done, a, I've done a couple of videos on tuning your engine in a car park, you know, driving it, getting it tuned that way, which is the way that I personally prefer. But there is another way, and, well, there's probably more than other ways, but there's another way that I think would be all right. You can get quite a, quite a reasonable tune on your engine, and that's by putting it up on a block, putting your car up on a block, and just tuning it on the block rather than driving it perhaps you've got limited space and you can't tune whatever i don't know but so i'm going to do a video and show you lot how to tune your engine while it's on the block uh, not actually physically driving it and uh, i think a lot of racers tend to do it that way when they're out on the track because I, I can't just go out on the track and give it a test can they so they tune them on the block so i'll do that one uh, when i can and we'll go from there but anyway if you've got any more questions, um, I'm, I'm making these videos based on some questions that I've been asked, but also by just what I've noticed in general people seem to be struggling with. So, like I say, I'll reiterate again, if your engine is running crap, check all of your pipes, bits and bobs in your tank to make sure there's no leaks, you know, nothing's leaking around the lid, you know, it's not going to be major pressure, you're not going to hear it hissing out, but... You know what I mean? Just make sure your pipes are okay. I've got any splits, cracks, thorns, anything in you. I've had, I've gone through thorn bushes before and I had little thorns in the fuel pipes. And um, you know, I'm thinking, why is it bloody not running right after that? And then it went until I ran my fingers along. Now I noticed all the thorns in there that was letting the letting the um, the pressure out. That there were loads of them. I'm talking hundreds of thorns in the pipe. This is like a little cactus. Anyway, just check things like that. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one, you lot. Any uh, questions, put them in the comments, and we'll carry on until everybody's got a perfectly running nitro car.